So Blue Lock Season 2 trailer came out yesterday, and I'm not going to lie, Blue Lock Season 2 might be a lot better than we all think, and I'm going to give you guys more information about that. So if you guys like this type of content, please make sure to like and subscribe, and let's get right into this shit. So after watching the Nagi movie, I was really afraid that the animation for the Blue Lock Season 2 just wouldn't be high enough to meet the quality level of U20. Well... I'm very happy to admit that I think I was happily wrong about that, right? I think when I watched the Nagi movie, I was like, okay, this is a movie, so it should be movie level quality. And usually movie level quality is like the best type of quality a studio can put out for their anime. Just look at Ufotable, look at JJK. Usually when they have a movie, that's their best quality. Like they're, they're going all out on the movie. But little did I know. I guess the movie was really just a stunt to be able to make some more money last, like last second to be able to make a more, more like budget for season two, because season two already, I'm guessing these clips are from the first episode looks a lot better than season one and the movie ever did. So I'm guessing that the animation will not be a problem, which is a very, very good thing. I feel like they've also really upgraded in the shading of these characters and line work on these characters because in season one yes the line work was kind of good and the shading was not as good as the manga because if you remember blue lock season one when you compare it to the manga it's like most of the panels from the manga especially like the big big like aura out panels the manga all would look better right because the shading of the aura just looked a lot more darker it filled up the page more and it just struck you a lot more than it did in the anime I feel like in this one, they should. Re I feel like they really made the shading a little darker so that when people get the aura, it's like filling up, like it's popping out of the screen instead of just like being there, like like just like a smoke covering, covering them. You know what I mean? Which makes me very excited for panels like um, Barl's Lion to be animated and shit because I really want to know how that's really going to look and size, like time aura, like, you know, that panel where everyone talks about that panel, Rin's Destroyer. Like, I'm really excited for all of that. Now, a lot of people have a little questions about the pacing of the show and if 14 episodes is enough to, to cover U20 and the third selection. Now, listen, I have to let you guys know right now, U20 may be a pretty long arc, but in hindsight, it's not a very, very long arc because... When you're adapting something, you guys have to take in that all that time they're running on the field and scoring goals and shit. Bro, when, usually when they score goals, that will be like maximum, like a five minute to six minute interval of them scoring the goal in the, in the episode. The rest of the episode could be something else. But like usually, I think the max time would be them spending six minutes on that one clip of the episode. There's no way we're going to have a whole episode where only one goal happens. You know what I mean? So it's a very fast paced arc where teams are going left and right up and down the field. And in my video, what I did when I was adapting Blue Lock Season 2 correctly, I gave it 15 episodes. But the thing is, I understand why they made it 14 because I don't know if they've seen my video or something. But I end up putting a whole episode for when Rin misses the shot and then say gone and goes on his counterattack and he's going 1v1 for Rin. And I said that that chapter would last like an entire episode until Rin wound up getting the ball and then Isagi would punch it in for the game. But I guess they're right about that because honestly, it's perfect the way Rin like misses. Then the end of the episode goes into the ending where we have insane animation, you know, Rin and say going back and forth then the, the episode will basically end with Rin taking the ball from Thing and the ball bouncing over IQ in slow motion with all the music stopped and Isagi punching that shit in for the end of the episode, celebrating with everybody. I think that would be a way better ending to an episode. And I don't think they should make that a whole episode, just the ending to another episode. Maybe the Destroyer Rin episode is going to have all that inside of it, which could seem a little rushed. But then again, Destroyer Rin doesn't have that much dialogue. It's just him going after the Japanese people 1v1 and demolishing them every single time, right? So it's not that crazy. Also with this pacing, we are also able to like JJK, we're able to get episode after episode after episode with something crazy happening. I feel like the anime, which for season two is gonna be the best, 
when it's fast paced and it's covering like maybe four to three chapters an episode. And what's gonna what's happening is that we are actually getting some crazy shit happen every episode. That way, it's gonna be way more immersing for the audience, and people are really gonna get the hype when we say U20 is peak. Because listen, if they slow down the pacing, let's give it a buck. These casual anime only fans are gonna go, oh wow, this episode wasn't that good, then that episode was good, then that episode wasn't that good. Cause you know what I mean? The pacing's not that fast, so something crazy isn't happening every episode. But when you speed up the pacing a little bit, because this arc is just a really fast paced arc with shit happening almost every possession, um, it's gonna be freaking better because every single episode we're gonna get a pivotal point in the match animated. Which will which will be sick. That's gonna be sick. Another thing I wanna talk about what they need to get rid of is the 3D bird's eye view thing they do with the CGI. Please tell me the CGI is gone for the season. Please, Blue Lock, get rid of that shit. Instead of a CGI, why don't you guys, whenever someone pings the ball over to another player, why don't you guys follow the ball with a camera while the ball's spinning in the air? Just imagine, Sai punts the ball, and the, we just follow the ball as it flies through the air and then lands you know, onto someone's foot. It's kind of like where the ball getting kicked into someone else's foot. And it's going to bring a more immersive experience when we're right there. You know, we're seeing all this shit happen. We're seeing his technique close up. Like, bro, I feel like that would be a lot better instead of the whole CGI. The, the ball is dropping in the air while we have a player running as a CGI model. <laughs> that shit was terrible. They need to get rid of that. But yeah, aside from all my other things that I have said in this video, I feel like the only things that need to be good for this season to be good is just keep the same dark shading, keep the animation nice and make it fluid. Remember, fluidity is the perfect thing in this because if you don't have fluid animation, it's not really good animation, you know what I mean? So yeah, keep the fluid animation, keep the nice shading, make sure to adapt the panels right. The pacing is perfectly fine with 14 episodes, guys. Do not panic, trust me, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> And yeah, man, like I feel like that's all the things I really need to discuss in this video. Let me know if there's some things I miss in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe, share this video to all your friends who are Blue Lock fans. And I don't know.